If there isn't one already, there's going to be an uptrend. Consumers are looking to purchase extremely affordable automobiles. In a time where personal hygiene is extremely important, coupled with a rebuilding economy, makes for very compelling reasons. Now, Kia, Toyota, and Honda are just some that are geared to answer that call. Now, it would be silly to think that one of the most celebrated small car manufacturers wouldn't have a response of their own. This is the Suzuki Espresso. First, let me just say that this color doesn't really do much for the car. It's like seeing people in public that wear face masks that only cover their chin. Yeah. Luckily, there are a lot more vibrant colors available for this particular unit. So, not just silky silver metallic, but granite gray, fire red, and sizzle orange. Now, as its name suggests, it may be a shock to your system because it's not your average looking small subcompact. It's got a lot of character, in fact, so much so that it may not be everyone's cup of coffee, pun intended. It doesn't apologize for the way it looks though, and that I like. Up front, you've got a very unique grill that is actually more of a garnish because there are no air intakes. You've got halogen reflectors, indicators that are found more on the center, and you've got a bumper that makes it look like it stands very much taller. Sadly though, there are no fog lamps. There are provisions, so maybe it could be a dealer option. And in a quirky fashion, you'll notice that the radiator intake only occupies about 60% of the front clip. That's because it is all the one liter, three cylinder, 67 horse and 90 newton meter torque engine needs to cool off. Now it is also made into a five speed manual transmission, which is the only option for the Espresso. It shares the same engine with the Celerio, but this entire car is 90 kilos lighter. So for fuel economy inside the city, heavy traffic, this thing gets about 11 kilometers per liter, which is crazy already. But when it clears up for like Sunday traffic, you're doing 19 kilometers per liter, and that alone is already knocking futs. On the highway, 25 kilometers per liter for a one liter engine. That's not bad. Now, while there are character lines down the side, Suzuki's point was to push the car as high as possible to give it a very tall stance, made evident by the extremely tall wheel wells, which house 14-inch wheels and 70-series tires. But look, it's so tall, it's like you can fit a family of cats in there. Or it looks like you're already in shorts and you're trying to cross a flood. Not pretty, but at least it looks good on this guy. Now, I don't want to, but I will forgive it with its hubcaps because, well, of its price point. Now, in total, what you get is 180 millimeters of ground clearance, which is just five millimeters shy of the Ertiga. Similar cuts from up front translate here to the back. You've got one reverse lamp found there, none here. Your rear taillights are paired with reflectors. Oh, and one more thing. Look at the height of this departure angle. It's about as high as the leg warmers from the 80s. Now, when you open her up, you're kind of taken aback, surprised really by the tall lip, but not as much as the amount of boot space it provides. For a car that's only about five feet wide and a hair over five feet tall, you're looking at 239 liters of space. That's with the seats up. And it's not the biggest thing on the planet, but there's also a full size spare underneath all of this. Yet, that's still not the biggest, most shocking factor about this tiny car. It's inside that'll get you. This is Jack sitting behind his own driving position. He fits. Okay, so it was a tight fit, granted, yes, but it was just to demonstrate that Jack, who is a tall person, can fit in a petite car like this. I mean, the space in here is so massive that to a contortionist, this thing is like a two bedroom apartment. With parking, nonetheless. Now, there are no toys to speak of back here. None. Zip, zilch, zero. No ball holders, no speakers, no charging points, no vents, no center armrest, nada. Just one cup holder in the center that it seems like the entire cabin needs to share. However, there is a nice time machine that can be found at the door. Uh, kids, ask your parents about that. But back here, what I'm really interested in is how Suzuki elevated the seat to give as much leg room and headroom as possible. Now, granted, the elbow room isn't the biggest on the planet. Maybe one maximum of two average size adults and not much more for real comfort. But if you need it, like I demonstrated, Jack will definitely fit back here. I mean, there's so much space. It's like pulling out space from uh, a magic hat or Mary Poppins bag. You have no idea where it comes from. I mean, check this out. Look at the amount of space that's found under underneath the driver's seat. 
I can put roller skates on and it'll fit down there. That's nuts! Basic and durable. Not really the most flattering way to describe an interior of an automobile, but yet it's true. Durable up here with the hard plastic, basic with the center console basically doing everything and nothing more of what the car can do for you. The large screen in the center is a nice touch though. You've got a digital speedometer, compact trip computer, a 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system, grateful for the power windows up front, elementary air controls, a 12-volt socket, and a USB port. Getting the keys of this car away from Earl was no easy task, but unfortunately, I had to do what I had to do. This idiot's at it again. Don't make me call your mother. Figures. comfortable driving position might take a little bit of time. The steering wheel doesn't move, it's in a fixed position, and the chairs are relatively high. But the nice thing about that is that you have a view of somewhat like a seven-seater SUV. You get a clear view of the road. The A-pillars don't bother you that much. So you really feel like you're high above, like a seven-seater SUV. That is until you use the horn. It's so tiny. <laughs> Most likely geared towards new drivers, this car will not be a problem to drive. It's quick, it's light, it's compact. Inside the city won't be a problem. The gearbox is a joy to use. Just don't expect way too much of it. Like, don't think that you can load it with 700 passengers and take it out on the highway. I exaggerate, but you catch my drift. The fuel economy figures that we were able to give you was because it was basically just Jack and myself inside the automobile. If you load it with a bit more passengers, heavier passengers, bulky items, you're probably not gonna get the same amount of figures. But within the city, yeah, I don't think this thing's gonna be a problem at all. One thing though I do mention, if you do take it out of the city, you will notice that the NVH will creep up on you past 65 kilometers per hour, which actually is a given considering how light this car is and the eco tires that are on this car. So if you treat the car properly for inside the city driving, shielding you from the sun and the rain and whatnot, like I mentioned, if you keep it inside the city, yeah, I don't see it to be a problem at all, especially for the price that you're gonna be paying for this automobile. Now for the more seasoned drivers out there, once you do get out on the highway, you see a patch of road, you will want to ring every ounce of power that you get from this one liter engine. You won't get much. I mean, it's like entering a race and everybody's on a thoroughbred and you're on a Shetland pony. You're not gonna win, but you sure are gonna have fun trying. Come on, come on, downshift. Oh. I'm winning, I'm winning. I'm speeding, I'm speeding. Okay, now I'm not speeding. I'm still winning! What it offers may be under par for some, but it doesn't exactly reflect what it can represent, which is a suit of armor against the elements and viruses alike albeit a rudimentary suit of armor. One that is available at 518,000 Philippine pesos. Now at that price and everything that this car can represent, I wouldn't be surprised if rebuilding economies and individuals alike band together and charge towards the dealerships to get in line for one of these. <laughs> <laughs> 